Hi everyone, it's a sketch of fashion drawing tutorials and in this lesson we are going to render a Balmain look from spring-summer 2013 ready-to-wear collection. Anna, thank you very much for your suggestion. So I have my pose ready and I'm starting drawing this uh, very uh, typical wide shoulders of Balmain attire and uh, you can draw any pose because as usually we're focusing on the texture and if you are level three patron or higher i provide free templates for every tutorial so uh, i'm starting uh, drawing i started drawing your shoulders and now i'm defining your um, your waist and actually we'll have there this wide like tight area and above it here we have some volume and the uh, collar and the sleeves the sleeves are actually uh, sort of raglan type so you see that from your waist the seams are stretching towards your neck and we have these really wide uh, sleeves that are attached almost to your waistline and uh, uh, the fabric in this case is quite um, structured, thick, so we can let us uh, draw these wider sleeves. And also you see some distance between the outline of your uh, garment and shoulders. It's not that there is an air, but there we imply that there is some padding. So I've erased uh, all the body underneath and I'm drawing these ellipses to show your sleeves and uh, the like the widths depends on how wide the sleeves are I'm not drawing just straight line I'm drawing ellipses that's like the line that surrounds your uh, wrist and now just below your crotch I'm drawing the upper like the upper layer uh, of your skirt and then just below we'll have a semi a little bit tra not trans translucent uh, see-through see-through panel uh, we'll make making this uh, dress uh, very like slightly shorter than original design is again for exaggeration and the shoulders in our case are a bit wider too so when we illustrate something we don't show it uh, the way it is but we exaggerate it a little bit so we're trying to have the same lens on both sides uh, so to show that this skirt is actually symmetrical so it's it has the same lens uh, on the left and on the right and then um, we have this side kind of panel from which these two pieces are like coming out. So these two lines, they become one. And uh, I'm going to be I'm going to be talking like an hour so you can mute me if you want but actually I thought that this dress is going to take less since it's short but there are many many details many different um, like uh, tiny details all different so it'll take some time so you can always pause, rewind back, take a look at. So because when I was drawing this dress, I got confused many times. It too, sometimes I would stop and just look at the image, try to um, de deconstruct this uh, whole composition. So, uh, so if you want to draw exactly this dress, then you can follow me. And also it's a nice idea to have a reference image on some screen or print it out as well, because uh, it's better to see what I'm drawing. So now uh, we have this area of the shoulders. Uh, I, I don't know how I'm going to call this, uh, just different parts, the, the shoulder part. And, uh, these all divisions they have um, different uh, types of uh, like lace because it's like knitted like a huge type of lace and 
and I'm making some wrinkles and all I'm doing right now just drawing uh, separating all those parts with a different pattern and by pattern I mean different types of interlacing of those threads so I'm going just to say pattern so here we have this uh, like a shield sort of a actually this dresses and uh, many Balmain designs they look like uh, armor and here when you draw you just what I like about illustration is that when you draw you you have to pay attention to all the details because you actually draw them and you start appreciating the design you pay attention to you just start thinking about inspiration behind it so um, it might be uh, useful also for you even I mean if you are not just an illustrator but also a designer so here I want her to grab some clutch and we are moving forward so we have this uh, some uh, like patterns in the center as well so I'm drawing this um, guiding line just to position correctly these different elements so they don't um, you know so they are of the same size and they are symmetrical in terms of their position on her body so okay Okay. Just uh, let's make the bottoms a bit more rounded. Closer. And here as well. More prominent. and then we have one more circle you can also play with different lines uh, if you design something and then fill in them with the patterns because right now we have only lines and some of the those lines they build some shapes by just intersecting with each other so here we have several c shapes like looking to the left to the right upside down that kind of rainbow style and by just overlapping they create some new shapes okay so we have one more this is the main central part covering your breasts so it starts at that upper row of that sort of a rainbow so uh, we've drew drawn the main parts and uh, I'm just using dusky pink for the shadows on her neck then mid-tone is almond okay and for the highlights I'm using ivory so for this skin tone I used three markers dusky pink almond and ivory starting from the darkest so I hope you start watching this tutorial in a good mood with big determination because it's not a short one and it requires your patience I'm drawing this uh, sort of balloon like shape a bit taller and there is one more like moon like shape on the top of it and then finishing this uh, shape I drew before I just make it a bit higher okay 
to just change the little bit the corners. And more. Anything that is about lace or some tiny patterns requires a lot of patience. So this uh, segments of this uh, central part are a bit see-through, so I'm covering with dusky pink, the darkest skin tone that I have, and also that upper part. Now I'm using Ice Gray 3 and I'm going to work with Ice Gray 3 mostly for this dress and uh, adding a bit of skin tone and using Warm Gray 5 to darken the base where we have the skin. You can match your markers, you don't have to be super precise. Uh, just use some for like now I'm using ice gray 3 just you can use some mid gray not too dark not super light um, so not too dark because we're still working with a white garment and not too light because uh, all these parts that we're covering with ice gray I'm still using ice gray 3 uh, <clears throat> in many cases we'll add white ink gel pen to show the the threads and if the background is too light then there won't be contrast and you won't be able to see the the threads so some mid gray works perfectly so right now here we have some square shapes uh, shaped holes so I'm drawing them you can draw just some guidelines with a pencil so your squares are uh, in a nice rose on a good like uh, distance from each other like even distance and then I'm just drawing the squared bottoms so they don't look like circles and then I'm drawing this rose stretching to the outside just to make it easier for me to draw the rest so I'm drawing are the squares just like uh, dots because you know when you touch the paper marker uh, the liquid uh, marker spreads and I try not to touch paper for long like very fast tiny dots so I'm using warm gray 5 right now because uh, certain parts I want uh, them to be darker and on the upper part I used ice gray 3 and I'm using right now too for the bottom because um, at those parts we have fabric white fabric below so that's why those squares are lighter and in the middle where I'm using warm gray 5 um, we have some skin there and it's in the shadow so I'm using some brown to, to show those shadows so Ice gray. So just mixing warm gray five, 5 and ice gray 3. And now using white ink gel pen to make these uh, diagonal strokes to show the net that she has on the shoulders. Just intersecting ones. And we have this, we will have this um, sort of ropes all over the dress and also these uh, thicker threads that are, for example, for those squares, those are like intersections of threads. So I'm dividing each row and each uh, column with uh, just white ink gel pen. And the same on this side, so uh, separating this net part, separating that line that we made in the beginning, then separating uh, 
each column and each row horizontally. So please watch in the full screen modes. Uh, you can always go back. Just try to catch the principle uh, and then just go on. So I drew all these holes separately instead of just coloring all the background and then drawing a net with a white ink gel pen because, uh, well, white ink gel pen is not completely opaque. It still can show what is below it. So if we had some dark background, totally colored, then it will be more difficult to not to show it so to have like perfect white so now i'm covering this upper part with ice gray 3 and using you can use warm gray 4 or warm gray 5 some some warm gray to color the inside if you don't have warm gray you can use cool gray as well so still stretching the shape because it continues Okay, so I'm not perfectly covering those parts with the skin. Just really doesn't matter how you color it. And I'm working with ice gray three. So you can add just a bit extra along the edges. And now I'm wetting the surface of white uh, part with blender, it's colorless marker. And then adding a bit ice gray one along the outline so here we just have white fabric and uh, very often i use blender and then ice gray one to get very subtle and soft gray so it doesn't look um, too so it's not too gray so uh, now adding more of ice gray three because that area is already dry so i can increase the contrast by additional layer of marker and I uh, hope you're working together with me because you can see um, like the results on your paper of what I'm doing. And then I'm using white ink gel pen. I'm using, um, if you are curious about the brand, this is one of the most common ones, Sakura gel pen um, number eight, which is like, which gives average flow of the ink. And uh, I'm just trying to draw these uh, divisions between different uh, parts. So this is one of your suggestions. Um, so if you are not part of our common Pinterest board, you can follow the link under the video and uh, just pin the different uh, designs that you want me to create tutorial for. Uh, this one, um, it, it might be a bit difficult because it's confusing because of all these parts, but uh, technically it's not that difficult. And you can use it for different types of uh, lace, also for like knitwear because there is a one idea behind it and uh, you can use it for like, swimwear with this type of texture so adding just a bit of gray inside working with a pencil just you know to define all these white stripes so they have a very clear shape and whenever you work on the side that is dark like for example here gray I can push on my pencil but when I work on, along the side that is, um, has white background, I try to work very softly with my pencil. So those edges are not too dark. Sometimes you even can skip certain parts. And this area will just make many, many dots.
and here we will have some horizontal lines same texture here and um, And really, like, you can pin anything. You can pin some couture, maybe some complex, um, like, designs. You can also pin something more simple. If you feel, like, uncomfortable, like, every time working with uh, tutorials that you find are too much, like, for the beginning. So it's fine. We can mix, and all textures are important, and... Um, yeah, so now working with this middle part, and I'm just again drawing the details. And uh, yeah, so here, adding some gray, and I'm adding ice gray three to build the background for this um, whiting gel pen to show the uh, the threads. So I'm covering that area with the skin. And uh, these segments that I just drew. And this is just continues down the, that part with the dots. And we have also uh, this. You can see that it's just that part that is stretching from her neck to the sides. They just all overlap. more of ice gray three um i don't perfectly color that skin area just to reveal a bit of skin tone and uh, adding just a little bit of texture with um, just pencil uh, again defining the shape of that um, stripe and uh, adding more here this uh, border dividing all these parts with a thick line don't push too hard so you get um, like a solid uh, white line because if you pu push too hard you can get the, the kind of division between because of the tip of the pen so i'm adding uh, extra shadows with a pencil just below those lines and on the sides. And here we have um, those intersecting lines and I'm drawing diagonal lines. And then a bit of ice gray one. Uh, somehow it has a blended cut, and I need to change it. So a bit of ice gray three again. And uh, many, many dots. And there too, we'll have some lace. So adding ice gray here along the outline here and there where I feel like we should have more shadows and adding more dots. There's also like that upper part that is just stretching down under that white string. You can also reduce the amount of these patterns. You can make certain 
just combine certain things for the purpose of illustration if you want like, um, and simplify the whole composition so here we will have those squares that's why I draw these horizontal lines and uh, here we also have uh, that uh, part with intersecting um, diagonal lines so I'm drawing them so you see we have this very uh, like quite dark background and all of those lines are really prominent so I start with warm gray 5 and I will make some of those squares a bit um, darker and then I will work with ice gray 3 and uh, so now when I add them they look like circles but then when I will divide them with a vertical and horizontal lines with white ink gel pen they will get the shape of the square so I don't worry about that so with ice gray 3 here it's important that you draw these uh, dots just under each other along those lines so you get perfect rows and perfect columns and I'm adding a bit of cool gray 5 like tiny dots on some of them to for the contrast so some of them are really dark I can even add here like okay nice and just let's color that uh, tiny spot on the top okay now working with white and gel pen and dividing all those squares And here I continue that line and it becomes more like uh, this um, curvular pattern. Okay, so more dots there just to fill the space. And what else we've got? We have this like horn like shape, which has a smaller version of that like curved pattern on the side. Okay, so I'm drawing it. and then adding more of ice gray 3 inside just a bit for the contrast again and here we on the top we have also this curved shape so i'm adding it too now it's not really visible and inside we have these uh, straight lines just changing the direction following that shape of horn and now I try to define all those lines using pencil so I'm using 2H pencil so it's not too uh, and also um, try to have the one that is sharpened so all those lines are not too thick and play with the pressure so 
it doesn't have to be perfectly even lines. In certain parts, especially lighter parts, try to push very um, softly so the line is thin, almost invisible. And when the area is darker, you can push a bit harder. And also when, for example, if you have a shape and you are like outlining it, the bottom part can be a bit darker than the upper part because we imply that there is this upper lighting that gives the shadow to the bottom part. Okay, now bit by bit you see all those lines that we just added. They don't look like, uh, you know, like blended or just white mass. Uh, it took some time for me to edit this tutorial because, because there were many, many moments that I would just be stay with the pencil, look at the pattern and just think and think where is what <laughs> because it, it's, it has many, many different elements. Now using Ice Gray 3 and just working with this like central area, we have again this shape that is stretching. Uh, from your rib cage down. And again, I'm adding blender because there we have just white fabric and adding ice gray one. And you can use this mix of blender and ice gray for like any white fabric, like especially bridal. So here again, we have some white fabric. I'm using blender and then adding ice gray one and again mostly adding shadows along the outline the central area usually is well lit and with warm gray 5 i'm adding these squares again in the beginning they look like dots but then we'll divide them with white and gel pen and here we will have some stripes um, they are a bit prominent so that's why we have shadows uh, like added with ice gray 3 between them. And here we will have again some patterns. So I'm building the background with ice gray 3. Here um, I want to show some, add some skin tone because uh, this lower panel, uh, some parts of it is a bit uh, see through. So we need to show that. But I'm just want the shapes to be clear so I know where exactly I need to color. So I'm using dusky pink. For this skin tone that is a bit tanned light skin, I'm using uh, dusky pink as the darkest tone, almond as a mid-tone, and ivory as a like um, lightest uh, tone for the highlight. So now I'm working with dusky pink. If you use other markers or you have um, just different uh, colors of pro markers, you can just pick similar ones. One is darker for, for in my case, dusky pink, then mid-tone, which is a bit lighter, and some super light one. You can also work with just two. Like for example, in my case, it's dusky pink, almond, ivory. You can skip ivory and just use dusky pink and almond. So uh, I'm using ice gray 3, this top part above then see-through area is just a regular patterned part. Adding shadows under that um, like string along your waist and then drawing that stripe. Okay. And uh, more of those like stripes dividing those squares. So for those stripes, the gray 
lines are shadows and white and gel pen are the tops of prominent parts and again take a look at the picture so you can see what are those lines are what i'm talking about and now here i also divide um, those squares so we we've made like half of this dress so uh, let me encourage you like in a fitness app like you are halfway through and uh, well just again separating those parts with the patterns drawing some details and here we'll have uh, one more like this curve okay how it goes is we just continue it and uh, just darkening that central area with a pencil and adding many many dots and repeating the process for the other side and um, if you want to go some extra mile uh, you can just pick similar dress maybe from the same collection and just do one more exercise by drawing it or draw two ladies uh, like build the composition and uh, yeah just draw one more and now adding more of ice gray adding you see like I'm pushing a bit harder because this is gray area and it, we just darken them white right and uh, also it's the bottom part of that uh, like arc line so and here also along the bottom of that white line I'm adding more of uh, pencil to show the shadows and filling in that shapes with the uh, dots more of dots and here as well I uh, received the requests on uh, helping to draw like eyes and hands and very much appreciate it if you also share like any troubles that you have uh, so we can bit by bit uh, go through those um, challenges of yours together so I will I can create some extra videos not just tutorials on rendering textures but also on drawing uh, the body or some accessories maybe okay so just working with a pencil if you have those white lines you'll use later pencil so we have these other steps okay using ice gray one just um, filling that shape and again a bit more ice gray one adding shadows still leaving highlights so um, so this dress doesn't look like gray in the end not too much of gray and again uh, separating this shape from surrounding by outlining it with this white pen and then we have these lines and let's fill in this gray shape and 
and um, like some horizontal lines inside and I can uh, add some pencil outline and by outlining I'm giving the volume because I'm adding shadows so these pieces they look more prominent not just like flat print and just adding some also vertical lines adding some shadows the pencil stretching those pieces okay and here we will um, have some just some white shapes you can take a look at the picture um, looks like some applique or just fabric and uh, here we will have those squares again so I'm using ice gray 3 and making those dots on the same level and this bottom part that looks a bit like a tulip with some flower so I'm uh, drawing those horizontal lines again because there we'll have the squares and here um, we need some actually not vertical I erased there because I drew vertical lines but we need this horizontal lines because there we will have the squares too so I started with a warm gray 4 you can add warm gray 5 really doesn't matter and then I'm adding uh, the lighter squares with ice gray 3 and what is the next step? The next step will be dividing them with a whiting gel pen. So when we draw like this white stripes, we work with pencil. When we draw these squares, I'm adding cool gray 5 now for extra contrast. So when we draw these dots, we divide them with horizontal and vertical lines to make them squares. Those are the things that we are doing um, when we work with this dress today. Okay, so, and here I'm just covering everything with white and dividing these dots. Okay, adding a bit of pencil and yeah so this pencil it shows that all these uh, elements of the dress are prominent so so this is not something flat and here I'm just repeating the process that we did on the on the left so I'm drawing that pattern like some white uh, stripes then some horizontal lines between them then these three curves a curve one then curve two and one more curve that is following the shape of that uh, part and then uh, next is pencil dividing all these objects if there are horizontal lines i'm just adding some uh, lines in between to add the shadows between uh, those highlighted parts yeah just anywhere in between i'm adding the pencil and here we have this white spot okay and I'm drawing, uh, I'm adding the shadows and um, and then here we will have those squares so I'm drawing just lines to follow um, with those squares so just uh, guidelines adding a bit of warm grey actually not a little bit to most of them 
And on that part with the skin, I'm adding ice gray three just to darken it for, for the pattern. Okay, so we are almost done. Like we are like uh, almost like 80% because we are left with some tiny um, repetitive things. So dividing those squares, adding some shadows with a pencil. And then adding these diagonal strokes, um, like parallel lines. And then um, just ones that are crossing. So we get this net, like mesh. And, um, and a bit of pencil again. So here we have uh, squares too. So I'm starting with warm gray five and I already drew these horizontal lines. Now trying to draw everything, all those do dots on each other. So when I divide them, there is not a mess. I know that I get a good, um, like um, squares are on the spot where they should be. And uh, because this shape is um, narrowing at the bottom, some of them will be partly like not visible. Adding a bit of cool gray five, especially in the central area. And there I'm adding some, I don't know, it seems like some wrinkles with ice gray one. And uh, showing a bit of outline. And with white uh, ink gel pen, I'm dividing these squares. So we get with all those dots, we get that uh, shadows inside, like really nice ones. <clears throat> and here we have some curves again. And um, just working with this pattern on the top. And here I'm drawing something like a, like a zigzag, one small one and one more like stretched and connecting the top parts and closing the shape. And uh, yeah. Okay, just um separating the bottom part a bit with the highlights. And if you want to highlight certain part, you can use whiting gel pen and then smudge it a little bit with the fabric, like I'm using my gloves or with um, a tissues, like paper tissues. For example, if you add too much of gray and you want to highlight a certain part. So again, I'm working with warm gray five, four, both works and ice gray three, some mid, uh, mid gray. And then just uh, dividing everything again. And again, we have those um, 
some like wrinkles on the top, some relief and uh, sh shadows because we have there some fold between this narrow part of the sleeve and the, the wide one. Uh, adding the bottle with a white ink gel pen, adding extra shadows with ice gray 3. In those parts where we like really ha should have some uh, some like folds and dark shadows mostly between at the spots where white area becomes narrow okay so now i'm adding shadows where needed like with ice gray 3 You can also just thicken those lines, uh, refine the pattern with a white ink gel pen. Uh, this is a stage where the dress is almost ready and you just take a look at the bigger picture. And if you feel like uh, changing something, perfecting certain details, you can do that. Because um, this is a little bit faster version. Uh, usually when you are into creating some uh, illustration, you might even invest like two days or more into one. So, but also I like some faster, uh, very dynamic works as well. So now I'm using Ice Gray 3 for this lower panel and then covering it with Ice Gray 1, letting it dry using dusky pink for your hands, adding shadows on one side of your fingers, just dividing them. And uh, same on the other side. Here we have the fingers that I beat longer, so I need to adjust um, them on the other side. You can do it with markers, really simple way uh, of coloring and actually drawing the hands, then coloring with almond. And that's it. I, I like how it looks and you can even skip the part with outlining. So uh, adding more of Ice Gray 3, here we will also have some sort of a rainbow shape. And then with a white ink gel pen, I'm adding all these stripes. And then drawing these arcs. And uh, sort of a bean shape. Here we have these strokes. And we have here the net. So I'm drawing diagonal lines and then other lines crossing them. And adding just dots inside that bean shape. Adding some shadows with the pencil and uh, uh, you might see there is um, the paper is a little bit wrinkled in this area because I used too much of white uh, pen in this area so it got too wet so you might wait a bit till markers dry and then <coughs> just um, um, add pen um, just wait between adding it so you don't damage the paper um, I am now working with legs so I added dusky pink first for the outline also pay attention that the thickness of that outline is different everywhere then I I'm using almond mid-tone coloring wider area and on the top I'm adding dusky pink that I used just before and because the surface is wet 
because of previous marker. The dust keeping is applied in a lighter way. This is the quality of marker. Now I'm adding ivory in the middle, the lightest tone. Then adding almond on the sides of that ivory. So here uh, you can see how almond plus ivory looks at the bottom. We would use this maybe two uh, markers to show a really like um, fair uh, type of uh, skin, like really light one. And in this case, we have light skin that is tan, so I'm adding dusky pink on the sides. And um, you can like pause and just look at the order. But the main idea is that you apply lighter marker uh, to the most of the surface. So the surface is wet, and then you just add darker markers gradually mm, from, from the outline to the center, so you get a good gradient. I have other tutorials on the skin. You can check the, the, on YouTube. I have the body one-on-one -on -one tutorial where I'm talking about rendering the skin. So. So whenever I work with skin, I try to do it faster. So markers blend into each other. Sides are darker, center is lighter. And now with dusky pink, I'm adding extra shadows on the eyelids, lower part of the nose, below your lips. So your face and neck matches your high contrast legs. So now working with the other side, again, pay attention to the order. I'm starting with dusky pink. I'm working with the outline. Uh, the thickness of these shadows on the sides depend on the thickness of the area. So if the area of the thigh is wide, I'm adding uh, wider, like this, uh, coloring wider spots. And uh, so that's the dusky pink. Next is a mid-tone, which is almond. I'm coloring both dusky pink on the top of it and um, in this case I skip the ivory in the center just covering everything you can work with two markers too the dark and lighter version so while everything is wet I'm adding dusky pink but in this case I'm covering wider area than in the beginning and because the surface is wet this extra layer of dusky pink is lighter between the almond and dusky pink so you can see just um, on this video and you can try it on your paper like use any skin tones that you have and uh, working with this lower part starting with dusky pink again and um, you can uh, use some tan or um, patty instead of dusky pink if you find it too reddish because um, it's a bit like orangey, I think. And a bit of shadows on your hands. And I'm using almond for your feet. And adding shadows on that back panel of your uh, skirt. and using warm gray 3 for the shadows. So in between your fingers, along the skirt, on your skin. So warm gray, I use it very often for the shadows, like under jawline, like along the jawline. And uh, because uh, warm grays work well with the skin, which is also warm. Now I'm using purple pencil. I use purple pencils for the details and extra shadows for the light skin and um, I'm just dividing those fingers but again it's optional if you like the way that uh, hands looked like before you can just keep this step in this tutorial I will cover only like the dress hairstyle and shoes um, you can add any clutch or anything it's just super long tutorial and 
since um, it's about this design of the dress I just skip that part so I'm drawing these lines taking into account the shape of your feet the central um, stripe is more straight and the side ones well they curve depending on the side so and then I'm making this <coughs> stripes none of them are super straight they are all curved so i'm using fine liner gray fine liner you can buy a set of colored fine liners they are always helpful for really thin details and um, because uh, marker is too thick i'm using dusky pink just want to darken the skin on the sides a bit and you can use white pencil if you want like on the sweat you want to add a little bit of highlights and just uh, refining the edges with a white ink pen and here I will just show the way that I placed the stripes you can finish uh, fill them properly yourself just want to show the overall shape and the shape of the heel so here we follow this uh, like curvature of your foot and then I'm just showing how it goes here. Okay, so now I'm drawing the heels. Uh, you draw just straight line a bit um, inside from your heel. So not starting from the heel itself, but a bit lower. So now uh, final step, your hair. I drew, you can take a look at your earrings. I drew just ellipses and uh, like with a, you can do it with a black fine, li fine liner or gray fine liner and add the highlights and for your hair I'm using black marker and I'm making strokes from the bottom up and from your this hairline down and look how the direction of strokes change so uh, the lower you go those strokes they turn down a bit and I really want to give it very rough look so I'm leaving a lot of highlights just even not showing the whole outline and then we are done I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and learned something new something useful for yourself share your questions and suggestions add your pins to our Pinterest board and see you very soon in the next tutorial